Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Virtual Unwrapper, which is a tool that I don't actually use, but someone in the comments asked me to describe how it works. I'm pretty sure I know how it works because my, my former coworker used to use it a lot. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go through a quick start and show you how to set up Virtual Unwrapper and the basics, and then you know how it works under the hood magically. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into that. Okay, so I'm going to be working in Docker today, uh, mostly because I don't actually use virtual unwrappers, so um, <laughs> we're going to be doing it in a container instead of globally. Uh, but anyway, I've just basically installed Python and pip beforehand uh, so we can do this. Uh, now, normally, normally I wouldn't install pip globally, but it's, you know, it's going to be easier for us to demonstrate virtual unwrapper without having to jump through a bunch of unnecessary hoops for you guys. Uh, but anyway, let's go to the virtual unwrapper docs and we'll get started there. Um, and this introduction here tells you kind of the uh, philosophy behind virtual unwrapper. We don't particularly care about that. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, we're going to jump straight into the installation steps. And uh, this shell that we're using today is bash. That's cool. Don't need to look at any of this stuff. Okay, cool. Pip install virtual unwrapper. And let's do that. Pip install virtual wrapper. And that should bring along virtual as well, hopefully. Okay, yeah, it does. Also, Steve Dorr, whoever Steve Dorr is. <laughs> we've got Steve as well. Um, but anyway, we've installed that, but that's not the end of the installation. We have to change our shell startup. Um, so I'm actually going to copy this, and we're going to put this in our basher C. Uh, copy. Oh, we need a text editor. <laughs> Let's install my text editor. Um, install Babby. And we need to modify the basher C. A whole bunch of stuff in here. We'll jump to the end and paste this in here. Um, I usually put my projects inside workspace. I don't think this is actually going to matter for us today. There are some special uh, commands in, in Virtual Unwrapper that deal with project homes but we don't particularly care about them. And this path, I believe, is going to be correct already. It needs to point to wherever you installed Virtual Unwrapper. So if you're installing in your home directory, this will be completely different. Um, but I believe user local bin virtual wrapper.sh. Okay, cool. So that, that file exists there, and we need to make sure that uh, it gets sourced when we run um, our shell startup. Now, my advice whenever you're changing your bash RC uh, is to not resource it. So a lot of a lot of guides tell you to just you know run source bash RC. Uh, this can often have some weird side effects and doesn't necessarily give you the same output as if you just started a new shell. So I would suggest starting a new shell. Now, of course, I'm in a Docker container, so I can't really just start a new shell. Um, but I can exec into this container, so I can run another entry point here. So we're gonna do that. Docker ps docker exec dash ti that bash. So exec allows us to run something inside of a container and uh, run that and something like that. Let's see, there was a problem during the initialization hook. If Python could not import the module. Uh, oh, okay. So I guess we need to set the virtual env wrapper Python. So let's do that really quickly. Uh, and this should just be user bin python3, maybe? Let's try that, see if that fixes it. Cool, okay, so the first setup, we get it uh, creating a bunch of hook scripts, so you can actually customize how virtual ends get activated and deactivated. You can do all sorts of crazy scripting stuff with this, uh, but if you're just doing the basics, which is what I'm gonna be going over today, you don't need any of this. Uh, the basics of virtual wrapper are two commands. One of them is called work on, and the other one is called make virtual app. And work on allows you to switch between virtual environments. So let's just say work on foo. Uh, oh, of course, right. We need to make the virtual app first. So let's do make virtual app foo. This will create a virtual environment for us. Uh, and you'll notice that it put it inside of dot virtual app slash foo. And it kind of hides this away from you. So you can, you can keep the virtual apps outside of your project. Um, and now, uh, oh, we don't actually have to work on foo because when you run make virtual on foo, it actually automatically activates that for us. So let's say we did pip install, I don't know, pi upgrade here. So installed something into our, our foo environment. Uh, but now we want to work on something else. 
thing, virtual env bar. So it'll you know create a new bar virtual env. And if we look inside this environment, we don't actually have a uh, high upgrade, but if we do work on foo to switch back to the other one, you can see that now we have some dependencies here. So basically it gives you two commands to switch between virtual ends and create virtual ends easily. It also gives you a bunch of hooks if you need to customize any of those behaviors. Um, but the question that I got in the YouTube comments was, hold on, how do these, how do these magical commands work? And the thing is, they're not actually commands. The way they work is these are bash functions, and you can see that by doing type work on. So I think they're bash functions. I, they have to be based on how they work. Yeah, they're bash functions. So this is the work on function, which does a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, but I think the most important part, uh, yeah, this is kind of the, the most important part where it finds the... Um, it finds the activate script for your virtual env and then runs it down here. Um, and that's that's kind of how work on works. And I assume make virtual env is similar because it also has to do that. I make virtual env. Make virtual env. I don't know why it doesn't type completing, but there we go. Um, we can see similar in here. Yeah, here's where it does all of its argument parsing. And then it runs surely in here somewhere uh oh it must be part of this command here somehow so maybe the virtual env wrapper is actually doing that behind the scenes but anyways um yeah that's how those two functions work they're bash functions and the reason they have to be bash functions is they modify the process environment they change the path ps1 they added some bash functions themselves uh, and a child subprocess cannot modify its parents' environment, so it has to be in process. But anyway, that's the basics of virtual env wrapper. That's the work on command, the make virtual env command, um, as well as how they work. Um, the reason, so the reason I don't use virtual env wrapper is I just make virtual environments in the directories that I'm working in. So I don't really, you know, I don't, I don't have a series of global environments that I switch around to. It's mostly just like per project environments, and that seems to work well for my workflow. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you want to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.